Hey, welcome to the program. Thank you. How did you get into photography? Uh, good question. <laughs> um, I have to contribute it all to my dad. Really? My dad's 92. He's uh -huh. still living in Virginia Beach. He's mm -hmm. been an amateur photographer ever since he was uh, in the Navy during really? World War II. Uh -huh. and he never put the camera down, and mm -hmm. uh, so I was always around photography growing mm -hmm. up. And every time I went back home, and then uh, when it was time to finish my first career and think about what was after uh, right. a life in corporate America, I mm -hmm. said photography was it, and I just knew it. And so three years before I retired, uh -huh. I started DWC Photography, and okay. I've been doing it now for almost 13 years. Wow. So, so as a kid, obviously he must have been the photographer, going to take sure. this stuff about... So what did you mean? Did you just notice, that, yeah, he's taking pictures, or was it more Well, you know, I was, you know, I love my parents, and sure. uh, my dad uh, was special, and uh -huh. uh, to, to see him, I guess, mm -hmm. it just rubbed off. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't intentional, but uh, yeah. just being around the camera, I felt comfortable around the camera. Didn't, sure. I say comfortable, I was comfortable on the back side of the camera, not right. the front side of the right. camera. Yeah. I never really wanted to get my picture taken, but I enjoyed... That's uh, usually for guys, because we yeah. don't want to do that. It's not our thing. But, uh, you know, I always enjoyed being around yeah. the camera. And then yeah. uh, I said, okay, you know, let's see where this goes. And it's been uh, one heck of a ride since I picked up a camera. That's incredible. Did, did your father ever talk about his World War II stories? A little bit. You know, um, he could have been a uh, fatality at... Uh, Pearl Harbor. Wow. Interesting. About mm -hmm. three weeks beforehand, uh, he got a change of assignments and did not end up in Pearl Harbor. But, Incredible. Uh, but, uh, you know, I got to see a little bit of World War II through him, through his camera. Right. He was in aircraft maintenance and mm -hmm. uh, always uh, on an aircraft carrier when he was mm -hmm. uh, not at home. And so I got to see a lot of what the military looked like as, as I was growing up. So you didn't ever want to be in, in the service then? Well, um, I had the opportunity uh, to give it a lot of consideration sure. in, the in the late uh, 60s. Yes. Uh, I was in college when uh, the, oh my the lottery occurred. Oh, gracious. And it was obvious that uh, once I got a number, yep. I don't remember exactly what it was, yep. but it was in the bottom, the, the right. earliest third. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I'm not going to take a chance, so I joined the National Guard. So I spent six okay. years in the National Guard okay. from 1970 to 1976. So wow. I, Still I, a turbulent time. Yeah. Era thing. Well, yeah, yeah. you know, I lost a lot of friends in Vietnam, and that was yeah. tough. I mean, yeah. uh, going to the Vietnam Memorial is one of the toughest things I've ever done in my life. Wow. Because you have a personal... So you know there, you see names that you know. Uh, yeah, a good buddy of mine, Johnny Osterhaus. Uh, mm -hmm died in his uh, second tour of duty in Vietnam, and uh, I never quite was able to to have closure on his death until I sure. went and found his name on the Vietnam Memorial. And it was that day that I finally kind of put Johnny to rest. And, wow. and so it was a tough time for me. I mean, it was friends. It was yeah. people that I knew very well that were going yeah. over there and dying for our country, and they weren't yeah. getting a lot of support back here in America. No. No. Um, and, you know, did I cop out by going in the National Guard? You know, one could argue, but I did do my time. Right. And I did it proudly, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad I did, frankly. Yeah, yeah and, and again, that's a tough, it's, it was a tough time for everything. Right. Right. And you look at it now, I said, when I go to the Vietnam Memorial, and, and I, you know, said, I was a kid growing up then, and yet it's just incredibly moving for you, but to see other people. And you say, it's just a list of names. But it's much, much more than that. Oh, it's a lot Everyone's got a story, it was a people. life, you know, it's just it's incredible. It was people with real feelings, with real families, mm -hmm. and real loved ones, and yeah. um, I just uh, find all of that very tragic, but yeah. it's the reality of our world, sadly. Absolutely. All the way to today. Yeah, I know. You could <laughs> argue it was like, you know, the same discussions go over. Are we supposed to do this? Does it do any good? Amazing. Anyway, we didn't go to talk about that. But so before photography, what, what did you do in real life? Well, um, interesting. I graduated from college in 1970, yeah. and uh, my dad, after he retired from the Navy, back yeah. to my dad, became yeah. an an SO service station dealer. Okay. In uh, Norfolk, Virginia, mm -hmm. and so he was. 
uh, he had his own service station and all the time that I was going through high school and college I worked there on weekends and during sure. the summer to, to pay my way through college. Mm -hmm. Long story short, after I graduated from college, I had by that time met many people within Humble Oil and Refining Company, yeah. and they said, well, if you ever get your degree, Dave, come and, and uh, talk to us. Yeah. So, uh, as it turned out, in February of 1970, I went and talked to them. I was yeah. offered a job a couple of weeks later, and as soon as I graduated from college, I went to work for... So or humble wow. at the time, wow. yeah. and uh, that obviously uh, evolved to being mm -hmm. in Exxon, and then mm -hmm. Exxon became Exxon Mobil. Yes. So for from 1970 for 33 years, I was uh, in corporate America working for Exxon Mobil. Oh my goodness, that's that's the corporate. <laughs> There's corporate. That's the corporate. <laughs> it was intense. You know, I, it was a it was a great life on one hand. Yeah. Uh, but very demanding. Uh, sure. You know, you don't work in corporate America for 33 years without uh, rolling up your sleeves and, mm -hmm. and putting a lot of wood in the woodpile. And uh, yeah. uh, I was fortunate enough to make it from beginning to end and mm -hmm. was able to retire. Mm -hmm. As it turned out, it was four days after I turned 56. But I was proud of my career. I was in yeah. human resources management for mm -hmm. uh, the last probably 25 years of my career. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed making a difference in people's lives and trying sure, yeah. to, to do the right thing for mm -hmm. for ExxonMobil and for mm -hmm. its employees. And um, I worked out at the Baytown Refinery for seven years as their human resources manager. Yes. And uh, it, was, it was a good career. I'm glad it's over and interesting. <laughs> um, I don't even think about it in first person anymore. Everything, really? it's all third person. It was like it happened, but it yeah. happened to someone who doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Uh, when I made the transition from uh, from human resources manager to freelance photographer, right. it was one that didn't have much of a rearview mirror. It was all about yeah. trying to do things that I'd never had the opportunity to do before, sure. to meet people that I'd never had the opportunity to meet mm -hmm. before, and it's been an incredible ride. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's allowed me to uh, meet people, to photograph people, to yep. go places, to do things mm -hmm. that uh, were never on my radar screen, trust me. Really? <laughs> the 33 yeah. so, years. So, so you let another use in corporate America. Did you travel a lot or not? I travel some, yeah. um, but it was all business, you know. Sure. When yeah. you work when people you think it's all for, fun, but it's not. Well, it's, <laughs> it's challenging, it's demanding. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it wears you down. Yeah. And you know, Corporations have performance appraisal systems mm -hmm. that say that, okay, every year your performance is assessed versus all of your peers. Yes. And to keep a corporation solid, obviously they have to keep their better employees, and when they have somebody near the bottom yeah. of the list, then they have to take, take whatever appropriate action they think. Mm -hmm. So there's that constant demand and reinvention of yourself from a performance standpoint. So mm -hmm. it, it, it takes its toll. It takes its toll on yourself, sure. your health, your family. Mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate enough to survive it mm -hmm. and as a result of that it, it gives me some opportunities to do the types of things uh, that I want to do and mm -hmm. uh, I live every day of my life like it's my last. Wow, well that's probably, you know, let's talk about that too because uh, do you get a chance to mentor uh, younger kids at all? Um, Teenagers and you know, kind of, you know, well, that stuff. Uh, first Not of, formally, don't have to be formal. Yeah. But, well, yeah. I, I spend a lot of time trying to help young artists. As it turns out, yes. I could tell you the story. Um, I kind of teach a class about uh, the music business. Really? The, the title of the class is uh, Music Business. It's two words. It's not just music, music. it's business. <laughs> and they only hear the music part. Well, that's, you know. And they kind of discount the business. Ah, yeah, yeah, we have to do that. Yeah. And uh, so. <laughs> Unless you really know that it's two words, it generally doesn't lead to anything other than uh, a very short time getting up mm. on stage and uh, enjoying yourself, partying with your family and yeah. friends. If you're not focused on the business part of it, it'll get away from you in a hurry. And and it's a tough business to start with. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you put, when you overlay the fact that it's not just your talent, but it's right. also your business. Uh, tools that right. and your ability to execute those plus mm -hmm. you gotta get lucky I oh, mean yeah. I do a lot of photography and a lot of my photography is music related yep. and there's some incredible 
talented people mm -hmm. that are meandering around America trying to make a living and to be discovered. And they just and, don't the, and it's not going to happen. Right. And it's not because they're not talented. No, it's no. just a matter that the supply and demand is not there. And sometimes the cream rises, mm -hmm. but other times it just stays below the yeah. consumer's radar screen. But it's just not just true of music. It's true of all the arts, sports, yeah. right? You know, there, there's this business element that people tend to ignore, you know? And uh, when, we, when you said, I asked you because, you know, do you get a chance to mentor, even if informally, uh, teenagers, because that's what they don't get. They don't get a lot of this. This is how it really is. And this is what your career could be like. Maybe they're, they're, they will listen sometimes, sometimes they won't. But, you know, but you want to tell them this is what it's going to be. It's going to be tough. They don't want to hear that. <laughs> no, they don't. And the other part of it that I try to do is because I take reasonably good pictures some of the yes. time. Uh, I have a deal with young artists yes. that says that anybody that needs professional photos, mm -hmm. I'll take them for you now, right. and then you can pay me when you're rich and famous. Mm -hmm. And I've actually had a couple people that have been pretty close to that. Uh, uh -huh. Usually, though, they uh, on their way up, uh, they forget about us guys that helped them in the early stages. But that's all right. You mm -hmm. know, the, the real key is you can't believe you're going to be a professional entertainer, whether it's in the, what, mm -hmm. whatever it is, an yes. artist, yes. a singer, right. uh, a flutist, it doesn't matter, right. whatever. Now, if you don't have good pictures, you've got to have good promo pictures, you've got to be able mm -hmm. to put yourself out there. Yes. And you've got to understand it's a business. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, sadly, even though uh, there's a lot of people with talented, they just aren't thinking on both sides of their brain. Right. And as a result of that, uh, they they don't succeed at least as far as they could succeed but wow. there are, there's some good talent out what, there what are some of the biggest mistakes you see that young in your case musicians make on the business side even when you're, you're trying to help them along you know give them these tips but well you know if, if, if you're trying to get from Houston to Seattle mm -hmm. either on your iPhone yeah. or you're gonna on paper you're gonna have a map sure you're going to figure out that, okay, there's a smart way of going from A to B. Right. And then you've got to go mile by mile to get from A to B. Mm -hmm. And the, probably the biggest thing that I see is they don't have a business plan. They don't have that map. Right. And then even if they do have that map, trying to work on that one mile after mile after mile, it's much easier to to do the art side of it sure. rather than the work side of it. Because they have, they have this innate sense of, at least they think they do, of what they need to do in, in the talent and the art part. So the business part, it's tough. They probably don't, yeah. And you know, some of them have parents that'll help sure. them. Others have a mentor that'll help sure. them. Uh, my experience is, is it can't be the tail wagging the dog, <laughs> okay? And to say it differently, the artist has to take control of his or her career yeah. and then ask for help mm -hmm. but it all is going to start and end with the artist whether they're here right. in the theater mm -hmm. up on stage and they feel like they want to be in mm -hmm. Hollywood or right. New York or whatever right. the circumstance or whether it's a young Texas artist and they're trying to make their career mm -hmm. in that field or whether right. it's country music or whatever the circumstance sure. is it all is going to start and end with the artist Yes. Unless they're the one in a million that have parents that have unlimited funds and or somebody that takes them under their wing that have all the wherewithal to take them for the top. And that's if you... And it's not going to use them or, yeah, or abuse them or whatever, right? It's so infrequent that yes. that happens. But uh, uh, what I try to do is, is provide a little guidance. Sadly, most of the people that I talk to, mm -hmm. once, yes. they don't come back. Because really? I mean, well, because I wear them out. You know, I I wear them out with the business side of it. Right. And I put more emphasis on the business side than I do on the on the uh, art side. Right. And I do that on purpose. Right. Because there's a lot of talented people out there, and mm -hmm. not you, sometimes you can get away without having the most talent if you're smart. That's true of all, most disciplines, right? 
You saw that in Uva Lima. Yeah, I mean, I mean, their corporate career. There's, you know? there's, there's people that are kind of in over their head, but they're hard workers. Yes. I might even qualify for that. Yeah. <laughs> Way in over my head, maybe, for my career with ExxonMobil. But I yeah. was willing to roll up my sleeves and go get the, the job done. Yes. And if it took me a little longer because I wasn't as attuned as others, so be it. But whatever it takes to get the job done is kind right. of the mindset that you have to take. Whether Absolutely. In, in whatever profession, but it's certainly true in the arts. But Wow. Anyway. Let's talk about the travel, because you said you got to travel to places uh, with photography, and you just came back from Iceland, right? I did. Um, uh, I have a long bucket list. Bucket list? You went to Tanzania? I saw your pictures from Tanzania. Yeah, That's a um, fascinating place, too. It was... Um, well, the, phot the photography has allowed me to see life a little bit different than most. Everything that I look at now is through the lens of a camera. Whether I have a camera right, right. to my face or not. Right. And very early on in my second career, if you will, mm -hmm. um, I uh, was asked to photograph a wedding in Belize. Wow. And that has led to weddings up and down the West Coast, interesting enough, friends of friends. Sure. Uh, I've been to Scotland photographing weddings. I've been uh, <laughs> to Hawaii. Uh, I've been to Belize three times, I've yep. been to Napa Valley, San Francisco, mm -hmm. San Diego, Los Angeles, yeah. uh, around Texas, uh, on the East Coast, so yes. I've, I've had an opportunity to travel that way. Right. Uh, and then I, I met a, a fellow who's a really good photographer, his name's Perry Conway, he's in uh, Boulder, Colorado, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, I went to a, a workshop. Uh, on birds, raptors, yeah. out in Colorado. And anyway, meeting this guy, uh, he, he travels the world putting as a guide. Right. And uh, we've gotten to be friends, and as a result of that, when he is doing a trip for himself, photography-wise, right. uh, I've been fortunate enough, he gives me a call and says, Hey, Dave, what do you think about this? <laughs> and so this has resulted in two weeks in Tanzania. Wow. And it was an incredible trip. My wife, Kathy, uh, mm -hmm. who I wasn't sure was going to really enjoy this trip because it was all about the photography. It wasn't about whining or dining. It was all about the photography, like from 6 a.m. to right. 6 or 7 p.m. every day. And was she with you all the time? She was with me the whole time, and she loved it more than I did. It was Really? It was spectacular. It was, um, Stephen, the, the best way I could say it is, Three or four times during those two mm -hmm. weeks, I stood where I was standing. Kathy was yeah. right next to me. And I said something like, how am I so blessed to be able to see this scene unfold? Mm -hmm. um, for instance, uh, one of the afternoons, there was thunderstorms in the area. And there's a pride of lions, a big pride of lions, right below uh, in the Land Rover right. that, that were standing up sure. in, yeah. and then here comes a herd of elephants. And it was like watching National Geographic or the Discovery Channel right there live. And over a course of about a 45 minute program, even though yes. it was not a program, no. yeah. we watched these elephants come in and we watched the reaction of that pride of lions. And the bottom line of this, besides the fact that it was absolutely fascinating, and I was able to photograph it. Right. The real king of the jungle? Yes. Are not the lions. No. The real king of the jungle is the elephant. Because when those elephants wanted to come in to where the pride of lions were, the lions turned and took off. Really? Oh, yeah. So I figured, it's kind of Madison <laughs> Avenue as far as I'm concerned. The, the advertising executives right. in New York were probably hired by somebody in Africa saying, no. Uh, we need a good symbol for Africa, right. The, right. the king of the jungle, yeah. and the lion looks like he's the right, right. one. No, It's all advertising. The real wow. king is the elephant. Interesting. And I have pictures to prove it, but incredible. obviously tongue-in-cheek. They're right. both pretty incredible animals. Oh, yeah. But two weeks there was awesome, and then the same guy, Perry, said, hey, listen, we're going, I got a group that's going to Iceland. Mm -hmm. And I said, Iceland? You know, <laughs> why would I want to go to Iceland? But I had remembered... Somebody told me that it was icy in Greenland right. and green in, in Iceland. Iceland. So he said at least the right one. So uh, 
There was eight of us, uh, wow. all photographers. We spent uh, two all weeks. All photographers? Oh, uh, yeah. And we spent, it was uh, just a while ago during the summer months and, mm -hmm. and where it's located is it has 23 hour uh, oh, daylight. Oh yeah, oh my goodness, yes. So we had long days of photography and it was difficult to sleep at night because mm -hmm. it never really got dark. But right. When I tell you we had two weeks of just some incredible waterfalls, mm -hmm. some beautiful uh, shorelines, right. um, and puffins, if you're yep. big into yep. puffins. Um, and just, again, some scenes. There was one scene, I'm actually having the picture printed, that I stood and just marveled at how much beauty I was looking at. And I mm -hmm. said, why me? Yeah. How, how did it happen to me that I get to see this? Right. How, do I, how, did, how mm -hmm. did it happen to me? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not special. I'm, yeah. But somehow the stars aligned, and this scene. As a matter of fact, my buddy Perry was standing right next to me, and there was it was rainy, it was foggy. We were standing. There was this beautiful white house mm -hmm. up on this cliff, and we had the water in front of us. We're standing there. We're kind of getting wet. There's a big fog bank that's over the house, right. and all of a sudden the fog lifted, and this beautiful green greenery on the side of this mountain appeared behind this white house and the fog lifted in front of us and it was just a spectacular wow moment and right. to have my camera there right. and getting to photograph that was has just been it's been great this just incredible and uh, i could go on and on i've been to alaska twice yes. i've been nose to nose with uh, a coastal brown grizzly bear oh, 800 geez. pounds <laughs> Matter of fact, <laughs> one of them, she and I had a, a moment uh, where she was maybe 10 or 12 feet away. Oh, she looked at me, I looked at her. She dipped her head down in the water, lifted it back up, kept her eyes right on me, and then right. shook her head as I was taking her picture. I could show you the picture, but it's eyeball to eyeball, and it was, it was a National Geographic moment for right. me. And I never felt threatened. It was not. No. Like, it was like she was acknowledging me on some level as being okay. I don't. I can't. I, I wouldn't. Have, you weren't scared. It. It was magical. It was magical. That's was, incredible. Uh, and uh, I, I wish I knew what was behind it. Right. But for that moment in time, it was that grizzly bear and I, look, staring at each other. And I had the camera up. I can show you the yeah, picture. It's kind of, kind of a, kind of a fun picture. But uh, oh my goodness! Uh, and then uh, I've been uh, again with this this gentleman Perry. Uh, mm -hmm. We went and photographed the American bald eagle uh, mm -hmm. in uh, in in Alaska yeah. on the Chilkat River, which is kind of the mm -hmm. largest congregation mm -hmm. of uh, eagles yeah. uh, because of the salmon that kind of spawn yes. there. But incredible week and a half there and then we went up to uh, Yellowstone a mm -hmm. year ago January mm -hmm. uh, 18 below zero uh, <laughs> but it was it was cold it was brutally cold right. but it was some of the best photography I've, I've ever experienced and I could tell you story after story yeah. just of, of of what we got to see I mean I saw an elk being chased by a pack of wolves and this was a pack of 11 and I watched it unfold as this elk came down this uh, ridge yes. with 11 wolves chasing it. And it unfolded over a couple, myriad, couple minute period. There's snow flying everywhere. I'm sh taking pictures with my longest lens watching mm -hmm. this. And my heart's beating as fast as it can. It's about ready to burst out of my chest. And I'm worried that this elk, this big bull elk, yes is going to die. Right. And all of a sudden he disappeared. And I said, oh my God, the, the wolves have gotten him. Well, to make it again, a very long story short, about 15 minutes later, this elk came back up in sight and there was a big cloud of steam around him. And the punchline of this story is, is he dashed all the way down. There was a river we right. couldn't see at the bottom of this hill. Right. He got in the water and the wolves would not go into the water because they're vulnerable there. 
because uh -huh. they can't. They're not as tall as right. the elk, of course. Right. And so he waited them out. They left. He came out the other side. He was so tired. He just, you could see it was 18 below. Zero. The steam was just all around him. But he plopped down and uh, just uh, laid down there and rested. But he lived. And I oh got, and I got it all, got on it all. all on film. Um, when you're taking pictures, what is it that you're trying to capture? Um, this is your style. This is a thing, you know? really corny answer. Yeah. I'm all about memories. Mm -hmm. It's the only reason I do photography. Yeah. Whether I'm doing a memory for me, for right. my family, right. most often it's for somebody else. Sure. It doesn't have to be a perfect picture, even though I try to take good pictures. Right. For me, it's all about creating memories, mm -hmm. and not just for the person I'm taking it for, right. but for generations to come. I'm, um, I just saw some pictures of my dad as a child that just came in on the internet from, from a distant right. Rel right. relative. Um, and, and I know that sounds corny, but pretty much everything that I do is about creating a memory. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if that's a need to have some sort of legacy for me. I don't, right. I don't know what it is. Right. But that's kind of the only thing that I think right. about. Whether and, it, and, and of course, a lot of the memories are, are for me. Yep. When I'm out there, yep. uh, some people see my photos, but I don't take them. You know, I sell a little bit. No. I do a lot of commercial sure. work, um, but um, and I'm working on a book. Actually, I'm working on a couple books. Yeah, let's talk about that book because didn't you just get Paul McCartney? Or you just had a I did, yeah, 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 and uh, <laughs> I just was up photographing Merle Haggard and, yes. and Kenny Rogers wow. the night before last. And, wow. Uh, but I am working on a book. Uh, if I'm going to tell that story, I have to go back and uh, and talk about uh, a young lady who I who I never met because uh, it really all started with her. her name was Court, Courtney Black. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a daughter, Sarah, mm -hmm. and Courtney and Sarah are about the same age. Sure. Uh, Sarah's I guess about 25 right now. Uh, Courtney. Uh, uh, dad is a fellow named Kevin Black. He's a dear mm -hmm. friend of mine. Uh, he, he, if you don't know Kevin, you yeah, might there's... might have heard of his brother. Yes, Clint. Um, well, you helped bring that uh, the benefit. Oh yeah, the Eric benefit Arrest was here. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, the, the nice whole, work, nice the, job. Yeah. The, well, the whole thing started with uh, Kevin and Courtney. Yeah. Uh, Courtney had Red Syndrome, and mm -hmm. it's a neurological disorder. It only impacts girls. They're born pretty normally, yep. up to about 12 to 18 months they progress yeah. and then they start regressing back to infancy. Mm -hmm. They lose their ability to walk, to talk, yeah. to have any meaningful hand motion. There's a lot yeah. of hand wringing, a lot of gritting of the teeth. They're very susceptible to seizures mm -hmm. and they are what we call silent angels. They can't talk, they can't communicate. Mm -hmm. And Courtney was a Rett syndrome girl. Sadly she died at age 16 and uh, I just can't couldn't imagine losing Sarah mm -hmm. at age six I couldn't imagine losing my daughter I can't imagine period, losing yeah. a child period right and my friend Kevin had a deal with the loss of his daughter and was devastated by it heck I was miserable about it but again to make a long story short uh, we decided after a time to have some meaning uh, added to Courtney's life and death, and we started trying to raise money and awareness mm -hmm. for Rett syndrome. Mm -hmm. And that was all happening while I was still taking pictures. Right. And But we had golf tournaments, we had concerts. Yes. About three years into Kevin and I starting to raise money, I got a call from Clint mm -hmm. and said, hey, Dave, it looks like you and my brother are pretty serious about what you're doing around Rett syndrome. Yeah. And what can I do to help? <laughs> said, well, let me think of something, you know. Um, and uh, but I, I picked the wrong path, I think. Uh, even though all the blacks think that they can play golf, I won't go there. We're going to talk about some golf. We'll about, we'll talk but anyway, we, we we decided to have a celebrity golf tournament. Yes. And we had it over yes. Redstone, and Clint was the headliner and did sure. a great job. And sure. we raised like seventy or eighty thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah. But then after we started doing golf, it occurred to us, geez, the talent the Black family has around music is just off the charts. Okay. But you did. But that didn't occur to you. Well, it, it did occur. But you know, Clint does that for a living. Kevin yeah. does it for a living. So yeah. consequently, you know, this was a 
a, a better approach back sure. then. Uh, but one thing led to another, and we started having uh, uh, concerts, and we mm -hmm. we called it "Spending Time, Ending Rep." Yes, and, and that's kind of a takeoff on one of Clint's songs. But uh, my friends Steve and Joan Saeed from Dosi Do, mm -hmm. where I do a lot of photography down there, mm -hmm. they generously gave us their big barn and said, "Hey, you come here, hold yeah. a concert." Yeah. Well, we did. We brought mm -hmm. Clint in. We brought Kevin. He has another brother, uh, Brian, that also mm -hmm. sings. So we did Spending Time Ending Red. And it was a big su success. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I tell you all that, that from the, from the fundraising standpoint, we have done multiple events, and, including here at the Crescent. Yes. Uh, and each time we've tried to raise more money, we've tried to raise more awareness. Well, while all this is going on, it occurred to me that what we were really doing is raising a hand to help. Sure. And I started thinking about, geez, I have hundreds of photos of artists raising their hand. And I've always kind of wanted to do a book of photography. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, probably ego, but um, I said, why not have a book of all of the artists that I photo all of them raising a hand for Rhett Syndrome. Wow. And so that's how the book concept started. Mm -hmm. And for the last several years, my best photos are of artists up on stage raising their hand. And my hope here in the next year or so mm -hmm. is to gather my best photos, mm -hmm. um, get permission from each of the artists. And I already, sure. Willie Nelson, I have a picture of Willie with wow. both hands yes. up in the air. And he's, he said, Dave, Done. I'm in. And my hope is, and he's not the only one, Merle Haggard mm -hmm. uh, has said yes. Ray Benson, Charlie Daniels, obviously wow. Clint, yep. Kevin. And I'll come back on Kevin for a moment. But uh, each photo in the book is going to be of an artist raising their hand. Mm -hmm. And my hope is, is that every dollar that we bring in from selling these books right. will go to help further fund a cure for Rett syndrome. Awesome. That's and awesome. Um, we have a team that has been assembled mm -hmm. and to try to make this project a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, since I started doing photography, I haven't taken up playing the guitar, but Kevin has taken up photography. Oh, really? <laughs> and obviously the, it's his daughter. Sure. Yeah. It's his story. It's our right. story where two people have come together to try mm -hmm. to make a difference. Yes. And now that he's doing photography, he's actually, we're hoping that he's going to take the picture of Clint that'll be the cover photo for this book. Wow. And then my photo of Kevin will be on the back cover, and then obviously my picture's inside. Mm -hmm. uh, but the hope is, is that Merle will sign some copies, Willie will sign some copies, obviously Clint or Kevin, so each book is going to be an original. Right. Not one will be the same as the wow. other. And our hope is, you know, I, you know, maybe it's a pipe dream, but my hope is is that through this book and through the story mm -hmm. of Courtney and mm -hmm. Sarah that we can go from concentrating our uh, effort to communicate about Red Syndrome just within the greater Houston area right. to perhaps get the Texas music or scene national. Yeah. You know, I don't want to think nationally. I'd like to. Sure. I mean, would I, would I love you? Know, Why not? I'm, I'm cautious. <laughs> That's an <a> excellent. <laughs> okay, I'm cautious. <laughs> That's a little um, yeah. But uh, maybe the book's good enough to get some national recognition. I maybe so. the story is good enough mm -hmm. to get a little bit of national recognition. Sure. And I don't know if I'll sell a copy. I'm going to buy one myself. Yeah. My dad and mom said yeah. they'd buy, buy one each. But... My hope is is that everything comes together mm -hmm. and perhaps we can make a difference and make even more difference mm -hmm. for, so that there are no more Courtney's yeah. and that there's more Sarah's. Okay? Right. We don't, these little girls are incredibly beautiful, but it's tragic. You know? mm -hmm. I'd love to get in their head and figure out what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what the book's all about. Uh, we're hopeful that that'll be meaningful, yeah. and 
but we'll know soon enough. I mean, we're getting close. I've got maybe a list of uh, five or six or seven more artists. Yep. Uh, Lyle Lovett. I, yes. I, I don't have my picture of Lyle yet. No, no, and I'm no. hoping that uh, Lyle will agree to let me photograph him. Sure. Yeah. And I was a big Bob Seger fan. Mm -hmm. And I just took a picture of Tim Weisberg, who you mm -hmm. probably haven't heard of. but he's no, a, I, don't, yeah. I, I got to meet him in California last week, and mm -hmm. he raised a hand for Rhett, which was pretty oh, wow. cool. And uh, Kenny Loggins oh, wow. and Van Morrison. Mm -hmm. So I have a short list left. And then I feel like uh, once we get these few remaining artists photographed, mm -hmm. then I have somebody that's going to help us get permission. Yes. And I can't imagine, you know, once Willie said yes, yeah. you know, Willie's an icon. Absolutely. And he's credible. Yes. They don't know me, but they know Willie. And if Willie right. said yes to this project, plus, it's not about me from right. a standpoint. Right. All the money, there's no profit. Right. It's all going to go to Red Syndrome. Right. So I'm hopeful, but we'll see what happens. Maybe one day you'll have me back here and we'll, we'll talk We'd about that. We'd love to talk uh, about that. But you know what? We were just said, because I just came back from a convention in Vegas, and even if you, you got books that were, you know, like I said, that were autographed and people wanted to buy the books because they knew the money was going uh, for a good cause. But they wanted, of course, they, selfishly, they'd like the book, you know, that's autographed. You could still make quite a bit of money just like that. For the cause. Again, yeah. for the cause. Well, you know. it's, uh, I, th I think the business plan that we have mm -hmm. uh, could work. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's some pretty good, pretty cool pictures. So, oh, yeah. uh, But you have to either have an interest in Red Syndrome, mm -hmm. or you like the fact that it's a cause, or you yes. like photography, or you yeah. like music. Yes. And so I'm hoping that those combinations coming together will give us a platform to tell our story. Mm -hmm. And... Um, when I'm in Rolling Stone, I will know. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm just kind of thinking north of the border, Craig. If Craig puts me in there, a okay with me, then I'll know that I've made it. You but, made it. Well, let's talk about golf. How did you get into golf? Uh, it's my addiction. Addiction. Yeah. I mean, when did you start? Was uh, it, I started when I graduated from college. In okay, so you got after college then. Okay. Yeah, and and and, and golf for me is uh, a release. I have some dear friends that I play golf with every sure. morning, and uh, guys that I've known forty, forty some years to just mm -hmm. a few years ago. But I play with. Uh, a group that like to play early mm -hmm. and fast, mm -hmm. and so <laughs> and they don't cheat, right? We, we, no, we don't bet. Oh, we don't bet. Yeah, because oh, yeah, bet that well, people listen, start cheating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, betting brings the worst out in people. Trust me on this one. Uh, I know some perfectly nice people that as soon as you start betting with them, all bets are off. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we tee off every morning about seven o'clock, and yeah. we're usually done by nine thirty, quarter to ten, and yeah. they're just. They're good guys, and uh, they're fun to be around, mm -hmm. and they, they like to play early, and they like to play fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, those things work in my lifestyle, because, you know, starting at 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, I have a pretty full day, you know. Mm -hmm. and you heard me say, uh, uh, every day is really important. You right. know, you're not guaranteed any. No. And no. Uh, we've both seen a lot of tragedy. and just lost a dear friend, Jack, who was one of my golf buddies, and mm -hmm. uh, certainly sad about that. But uh, back to Clint Black, he's got a song called No Time to Kill. Yes. And if I were to ever get a tattoo, that's what the tattoo would say, No, no time, time to, to Kill. kill. And so uh, every day uh, we try to get in a good round of golf and then uh, try to squeeze as much out of that day as possible. Right. Uh, because uh, that's the only one you have, if you're mm -hmm. lucky. And even that one's... You don't know. But, uh, again, not gruesome, but kind of the way I live my life. It drives my wife crazy, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, certainly my better half, and she tolerates me. But, Was there ever a time when you didn't seize the moment and said, I've got to ex experience this and, and savor that, that, that experience? You say you take pictures for memories, but and we've talked to other photographers, too. Yeah. You know, really good photographers can capture that story, if you will, within the, the picture. The rest of us, we're just taking pictures. Yeah, there's a lot of that, you know. Well, I take my photography seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got into it 13 years ago, yeah. I didn't come in thinking I was a very good photographer then. Mm -hmm. I'm now 13 years into it, and I don't mm -hmm. feel like I'm a very good photographer now. I think I'm 10 to 15 years away 
uh -huh. from being the type of photographer that I want to be. That's not saying that there's not a lot of people out there that right. that really love my stuff. Right. But it, you got to peel it back, mm -hmm. and until you really get into it and and get deeper into it and understand, I have a mentor that is the only guy I really care whether he likes my pictures or not. Really? Yeah, his name's Doc. He lives over in Kingwood, and I send him a picture, and he gets all gruffy and <laughs> and tells me the truth, okay? But I know that when he likes one of my pictures, which isn't very often, I know I have a good You've photo. A good, but, wow. but I enjoy it. I mean, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy it the first time when I take it. Yeah. I love having a camera in my face. Yeah. And it's not just one in a variety of settings yeah. and but I get to go back and relive that mm -hmm. and I generally don't forget I mean a picture for me allows me to remember something way more clearly mm -hmm. and uh, I, I savor the moment that's the, that's my relief I mean I do a lot of things but kind of time stops right when I have a camera mm -hmm. in, in my face and I take a lot of pictures. I have a lot. Of, <laughs> I have uh, terabyte after terabyte. Oh, gee. <laughs> I shoot for the rodeo. I mean, I take. Well, of course, yeah. uh, I take maybe forty to fifty thousand pictures mm -hmm. in nineteen days and nights for them. Right. And, uh, but it's it's one heck of a ride. I've been. I've really enjoyed it. It's been. Uh, I don't know if I ever mentioned to you. I'm an equal opportunity photographer, but I was the president's mm -hmm. photographer. Uh, when he came through Houston a few years wow, ago, and, yes. and uh, you know, to be inside the ropes with the President of the United States, putting politics aside, right. was was special. So how did you get that? <laughs> Another long story, <laughs> but, but I'll tell it because yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. it was very serendipitous. Yeah. Uh, but I have a dear friend who I worked with at Exxon Mobil. His name yes. was Mike Mallon, mm -hmm. and Mike was still working after I retired. It was pretty mm -hmm. early on, but he called me one day from his office in Fairfax. Yep. Uh, he said, Dave, I've got one of my employees in my office and she is in tears. She's getting, this was on a Monday, she's, right. on Saturday, she's getting married in Lake Okaboji, Iowa. This is, she's in Washington, <laughs> D.C., right. but she and her right. fiancé are getting married that Saturday. She gets right. a call moments before he called me from her photographer in Iowa and saying, hey, I'm the only photographer within 200 miles. I just got offered a better deal. I'm giving you your deposit back, and we're ripping up the contract. But she could care less about that, of course. You know, she she's devastated because yeah. her photographer bailed yeah. on her, which is very unprofessional. Yes. yes. So she's sitting there with no hopes of getting her special day yes. of, of marriage documented. Yes. Mike knows that I'm a wedding photographer, and I'm going to get to the punchline of this story here in a moment. But he calls me. I agree to go up there for exactly what this mm -hmm. photographer was going to yeah. charge her. I fly into Sioux City, rent a car, drive up to Lake Okoboji, meet this couple for the first time and photograph their wedding. Little did I know that this guy was a chief aide for Bill Clinton. Subsequent, <laughs> subsequently went to work for the president Yes. while he was still on the campaign trail. Well, he remembered the, the favor. favor. Yes. Not that I did it. No, for that no, reason, no. he is sitting next to then candidate mm -hmm. and says, Dave, we're coming through Houston. We need a photographer to photograph this yes. fun raising event. Well, that led to one photo shoot. Then he was elected president. I get a call back saying, hey, will you be the president's photographer? Wow. And then since then, I've also photographed the vice president. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the interest in it for me... Um, even though it was very lucrative, it was right. not about the money. No. But to be inside the ropes, to see the security that goes with that, mm -hmm. uh, interest in, um, uh, at the end of the shoot, uh, the president said, I want you to turn your camera over to my chief aide, and I want him to take a picture of you and I. Oh, yes. So my my 15 minutes of fame is that Probably a hundred people paid thousands of dollars each to be photographed with the president. Yes, I got paid to be photographed with the president. <laughs> so, and also uh, forty-one. Yes, 
Uh, my my 15 minutes with him, he was at the rodeo one time, and mm -hmm. he had to go by me to get to his seat, Yes, and he had a handful of food, yeah. and I could see that he was looking over my shoulder, and I oh. knew that be over my shoulder was the bar, and I said, Mr. President, uh, you want something to drink? He said, yeah. you know, I think I'd like to have a beer. And I said, Mr. President, how about let me buy you a beer? <laughs> he said, you don't need to do that, I got money. And I said, it would be my honor, yes. President Bush, Yes, he was obviously ex-president at the yes. time, to buy you a beer. So I turned around, I gave the bartender a $20 bill, yep. and I said, you give the president whatever he wants, you keep the change. Mm -hmm. He grabbed his Miller Lite, went and sat down. His son mm -hmm. came over introduced himself and said thanks for thanks for buying my dad a beer <laughs> and then the secret service guy came over and said thanks for buying my boss a beer and i said i've got to ask you one question he said i said you've been on the presidential sure. detail for a while have you ever seen anybody else buy the president a beer he said nope and I said, wow. So, I doubt if I'm the first person to ever buy the president, but That's I bought still. the president of the United States a beer. <laughs> and I like him. 41. He's a good guy. Good guy. Very honorable yeah, guy. Yeah. You ever been to the Presidential Museum at AML? I it? have been to it. I haven't been through it. It's and, incredible. Because uh, you, know, you, you know his history. Sure. And, and I knew it, but you don't realize it when it's all, until it's all in one place. I mean, he was in the true sense, you know, that civil servant. I mean, he did many things before he was president, you know, and we know it, but until you see it all together and you go like, wow, no, he really served the country. Yeah. You know? I'm a, I'm a fan. And although I was born in Boston, raised in Virginia, I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of Texas. And mm -hmm. uh, I met this hoodlum <laughs> who's a great guy and a wonderful artist mm -hmm. who has sucked me into his art. Uh -oh, and, uh, uh -oh. And um, I'm talking about my dear buddy, uh, Craig Campobello. Oh, Craig, yes. And uh, Craig has got me hooked on uh, uh, Texas history. And, yes. Uh, and I know you're familiar with the flag part, but I, yes. I, I would hate to sit here and not talk about one of my passions in mm -hmm. life as a Bostonian by birth, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, Texan by trade. <laughs> Uh, Thanks of my choice. <laughs> yeah, choice, trade, you know, it, it, it's, it's all been about Craig, uh, but, yeah. you know, he shared a vision with me several mm -hmm. years ago about wanting to build this little flag park out here mm -hmm. on the interstate. It's, it's, it's a great, it's a great effort. Like he threw effort. the yeah. hook out there and I just, you know, mm -hmm. he, and uh, he reeled me in. He know. and Jim Walker and some others oh, yeah. put all the effort to kind of get that to pull that off. Well, so you know, just, we've been working on that and okay. um, it, uh, the, I'm with a little group, uh, 501c3, called the Friends of the Flag Foundation, mm -hmm. and probably one of the finest groups I've ever worked with. And I worked with some great people at Exxon. Well, the board that I work with right now that includes yep. uh, Jim and, yes. and Craig yes. and um, uh, Annette, mm -hmm. Spikes, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I mean, I can go on and on. We have uh, some of the best citizens mm -hmm. in this city work yes. on that board and they work their butts off but mm -hmm. uh, you know we got the park open mm, yes and uh, now we're trying to step it up a notch and uh, we had a bunch of blue bonnets planted our mm -hmm. hope is over the next few years is to make uh, the Lone Star Monument and Historical Flag. We want to make it an outdoor museum and mm -hmm. maybe even change the name. Mm -hmm. We want to put uh, uh, more blue bonnet seeds out there. Right. And so we want all of the area around the park mm -hmm. and over around the retention pond, mm -hmm. all the way to McDonald's in the corner. We want to make that the preeminent blue bonnet destination in this part of Texas. Wow. And we have uh, some energy to try. There's a trestle bridge mm -hmm. over at 2854 FM, 2854. Yep. Yes. Presumably Bonnie and Clyde used to hide under it or right. do right. something under right. it. Um, <laughs> uh, we won't even go there. But, no, it's all right. <laughs> uh, we might have to edit that out. I'll, I'll leave that to you. But uh, we're hoping to move the trestle bridge yes. over, really? over Alligator Creek. Mm -hmm. from the flag park over to that park area on the mm -hmm. other side. We think it'll make a wonderful landmark. Mm -hmm. It's historic in yes. nature. 
And uh, so part of our growth of that area, we're, we're hoping includes that trestle bridge. And better than all of that, uh, we're working with the Conroe Independent School District with the hope that every fourth grader will come to that park for a two hour field trip. Mm -hmm. And so if we can help educate the kids and grandkids uh, that we have here in the county, I think we're going to have just uh, an incredible opportunity. And, uh, you know, this city is, has some pretty terrific leaders. We have a beautiful downtown. We have mm -hmm. probably yes, we one of the best theaters I have ever been in. And we get spoiled. We really get spoiled. Yeah. I mean, this, yeah, this needs to become a landmark. Mm -hmm. uh, this city needs to open its arms and mm -hmm. accept and help with the growth yes. uh, that it deserves. And I think that this city, I mean, we have the new Red Brick Tavern, we have the yes. Corner Pub, we have the Crichton Theater, we have art galleries, we I have... Know, we got, yes, we've got Owen, we've got, there's things, we got new places coming, I mean, it's starting mean, it start to grow, I mean, it's slow, yeah. but it, it's, it's growing. And so. Well, I, I, I attended a meeting a couple weeks ago uh, where the downtown community is mm -hmm. coming together and I think any group becomes bigger than the sum of its parts mm -hmm. if it puts its collective best mind together mm -hmm. and effort. And I think the Crichton Theater is going to be caught up in the middle of that. And I mean, this is a pretty special place. And you know, I, I was just recently asked to, to join the board mm -hmm. of the Crichton Foundation. Wow. Yeah. Incredibly excited about that. I don't know what it'll lead to. I might drive them all crazy, but uh, I'm hoping that maybe I can make a little bit of a difference. Uh, Hope you make a difference the, and push them to get some more money so we can take care of the place. Yeah. <laughs> that's you that know, that's cool. what we're about. Well, yeah. you know, the, the business community is obviously uh, heading towards us. Mm -hmm. uh, ExxonMobil is building a big site yes. just a few mm -hmm. miles south of here. Mm -hmm. Looks like there's some other big companies that are going to migrate this way. I mean, the Woodlands is full. Yeah, that's right. And uh, the next logical place to come is up into the northern part of the county. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping that the business community, which needs to step up mm -hmm. in a lot of fronts, will come in here and say, hey, we, we can make a difference. We're into the arts. I mean, when I worked right. for ExxonMobil, they, they spent a lot of money trying to support the arts. Yes. And I think part of my growing up and trying to nurture the, the little bit that I do mm -hmm. is in large part as a result of the attitude of the corporation I worked for yes. for 33 years. And we have a landmark here in the Crichton Theater and uh, you know, your organization uh, uh, and, and, the, and the shows that you guys put on, you know, the, the, is pretty special. And You know, except, I appreciate that. You know, like I said, we do it. We tell people we don't do it because we want to be a theater group. We do it to support the place. And most people come here because they want to support the place. Because it is a special this place. And and you get spoiled. I mean, I've worked in a lot of hole-in-the-wall dumps, <laughs> you know, uh, as, for nonprofits. But you know, the place is special. It needs help, yes, but it's special. Well, you know, and as you know, I run around here as a banshee one night for each show mm -hmm. before it. Mm -hmm. oh, has its opening curtain taking production pictures. So Which I, we appreciate well, immensely, yes. A lot of work, but I get to see the actors that you have up mm -hmm. close and personal because I'm looking at them. Oh, yeah, yeah, pretty close. <laughs> and they're, they're so impressive. I mean, uh, we have some incredibly talented people that... Well, that's the thing. There's a, there's a lot of talent out there. And, and they come from incredible... Like I said, the last show, they came from... You know, we have people from College Station, actors from College Station, from the west side of town, like Katie. It's a long drive. It can take some, you know, bad traffic, two and a half hours, one way. Well, we're worth it. I mean, uh, the the one of the favorite things I do is to photograph the uh, sounds of Texas. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And that music series has uh, been really wonderful. I mean, <laughs> if you, I went back and looked at my photos of all the people who have come through here. Right. And uh, the, the amount of talent that comes through here. The amount of talent that comes through the, the Conroe area. I mean, right. we, we have uh, 
the Corner Pub has live yes. music coming yes. in. Uh, the Red Brick Tavern, uh, yes, Debbie right. and mm -hmm. and uh, Jay are now bringing in music. Right. We have great music coming in here. We got George Jones' mm -hmm. daughter coming in here. Mm -hmm. Um, we have the music cafe, the Dusty yes. Dog Music Cafe. We mm -hmm. have the Big Barn. I mean, every place that you turn, uh, there's great music, and I, I think we need to kind of stick our chest out and kind of brag a little bit more yeah. that we're kind of East Austin. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of great talent around here, and a lot of great mm -hmm. venues, and they all bring in. Good music. Now, what I struggle with is I think there's a big part of the community that could do more to support those that are trying to keep the arts and live music alive. Yes. I don't know. It's back to the business side. Yeah. You, know, you know, we actually have, you know, we're starting to build a national reputation. But that doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> you know, no, I mean, <laughs> it, it's that simple. It doesn't pay the bills. I mean, it's great to have that reputation, uh, you know, amongst, you know, uh, people of national caliber. But... It doesn't pay the bills, and we have to get, you're right, we need to get the business community said, we've got something special here, but we need your help, you know. And, you know, some think that, you know, Houston's close enough and that they really have more talent that comes into there. Right. And mm -hmm. I would say that it's getting, it's getting more balanced, and certainly, um, uh, you know, somebody that I take my hat off to... Uh, for all of her effort is uh, Susie Pekorski yes. mm -hmm. and the Young Texas Artists. Mm -hmm. I think that that, her organization, her effort, that event, mm -hmm. uh, which she has made me photograph everything. <laughs> no, not really. I, I love to do it. It's my only break from the rodeo because right. it's right on top of it. But right. YTA is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I mean, whether you like classical music or not, the talent that has come through Just this incredible. theater yeah. is off the charts, mm -hmm. and uh, it we got to feel really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, that we have that event mm -hmm. taking place in downtown Conroe, mm -hmm. and we have the poet laureate, yes, and a bust of him. And mm -hmm. I mean, we, it, it, it's 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 coming together. I mean, uh, yeah. but is there a long way to go? Sure, but yeah. um, I hope that. In some small way, I can make a little bit of difference to uh, absolutely here in the community, mm -hmm. um, but we'll see. We'll see. We've got a few more years, I hope. <laughs> Hopefully, more than just a few more years. Well, let's talk about the rodeo. How did you get into the rodeo? It was again fairly serendipitous. Um, Clint had replaced. Matter of fact, it was same time Courtney died, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Clint was coming in and playing the rodeo. Yeah. And, you know, at one time he was playing two shows a year. I mean, he's a big deal. You know, wow. he's, he's Clint's a yeah. superstar. I oh, mean, yeah, oh, absolutely. I yes. mean, he, he and I talk eyeball to eyeball, and I probably take him for granted on, on some time, but the reality is he's a big, big deal. And yeah. he was, was and is still mm -hmm. big in the music industry. Yes. But he was playing, and um, uh, I'm was invited through Kevin to go down to Soundcheck, and the photographer at the rodeo uh, just happened to be there at the same time, and I mm -hmm. kind of bumped into him, and I, we started talking. His name was Frank Martin. He used yeah. to be the veterinarian and photographer for the rodeo 35 years ago, however wow. many years ago. N nice guy. He's a veterinarian. Yeah. But I said, hey, listen, if you ever need any help, yeah. uh, which I start a lot of sentences with, if right. you ever need a lot of help, and... I don't, it's, it's worked well for me, and usually I mean it. Um, he said, well, maybe you can come out one day. So he invited me out one day to shoot, gave me about 20 or 30 rolls of film. It was before digital right. photography, which those were the, the old <laughs> days. And uh, so I took some pictures and gave him the rolls back. And mm -hmm. one thing led to another where I started helping him. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he said, hey, listen, if, if you're interested... Uh, the rodeo's been needing some backup because I'm the only photographer, right. and we like your work. If you're game, come on out. And that was eight years ago, and um, they have uh, seemed to have embraced uh, my photography. Interesting about that photography is they see my pictures before I do. 
How could that be? Well, because they want the photos almost instantaneously. So I right. take the pictures on my memory card rather right. than roll a film, right. and I hand them the card. So they get to see them. Be, they give me the card wow. back the next day, but right. they want the pictures for the website sure. and for other other uses pretty right. quickly. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have your act together, you know, <laughs> letting it's kind of like going to the opening up before you go through dress rehearsal, you know. Right. Uh, but so far, I mean, it's been eight years, and they keep inviting me back. So I must be doing something right. But I, I love it. The only thing I don't do, I have access to go. Anywhere I want to go, right. I can go out on the dirt. Right. Uh, but I have a rule. It's kind of a life-saving. When the bulls are out, yes, Dave's behind. <laughs> uh, I saw a photographer several years ago. Uh, uh, Jake, he's with uh, the Chronicle. Right. Was out on the dirt. He's a great photographer, but he got caught away from the the right. rail with a mad bull. Mm. And it was the grace of God that he survived that mm. little ordeal. He actually didn't get hit, but the whole thing got shown up on video. Oh, gracious! And it's still right now. It's a historical moment with the right. with the rodeo. But I don't I don't want no. I don't want any part of a bull face to face. I I want that nice <laughs> rail. I'll go out there with the horses right. and, uh, and and the steers, but uh, the bull. And the reality is, is with the lenses the way they are now, you right. can't tell if I'm inside or outside the fence. No. But it's it's been a blast, and you know, I get to practice my trade. I'm, mm -hmm. I have an, several areas that I'm able to shoot from. Plus, I get to shoot the first two songs of each concert, and uh, I I love it. But then again, you know, if I have a camera in my hand, I'm I'm a pretty happy guy. To, and uh, whether it's uh, music related sure. or whether it's sports, I shoot for the uh, Texas Bowl, mm -hmm. and it's had a variety of sponsors over the years. But uh, the Houston Texans uh, manage that bowl, and I've worked with some really nice people mm -hmm. uh, down at Reliance Stadium, uh, shooting that bowl every December, and it's kind of one week of my life. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a good week. They're they're a good group down there, and they're trying to make a difference in the community. And, mm -hmm. Pretty often, if somebody's trying to make a difference, uh, I'm pretty willing to try to lend them a hand. Uh, but uh, there's a, there's a and all those groups, including ourselves, we appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, absolutely. And, and, and speaking of groups, you know, I, I think I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, two that are pretty close to my heart as well. Not as close as Courtney mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in Red Syndrome, uh, but. Uh, I do all of the senior pictures, uh, high school seniors for uh, uh, Boys and Girls Country out in Hockley. Mm -hmm. And it's probably the largest uh, um, foster home mm -hmm. in the area. But uh, it's for kids who are taken out of dysfunctional family situations. They're not dysfunctional, yeah. but their parents generally are. Mm -hmm. And these kids are embraced by a wonderful community out there in Hockley. It's a, they have their own campus, but right. one of the highlights for me every year is to go photograph the high school seniors. They go to, wow. they go to Waller High mm -hmm. School, mm -hmm. um, but I get to do all their senior pictures, and I, the, the cap and gown as well as the informal stuff. Yes. And they, you know, every year they have five or six high school graduates that, that leave Boys and Girls Country and go on to college or mm -hmm. wherever they're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but do do a lot of photography there. I, just recently, I got to photograph, and this was really fun. It was hectic, but uh, siblings—they're not generally just one child there. Right. They have brothers and sisters. Right. And but they're kind of, however, they're situated in the mm -hmm. foster home. Uh, often, the pictures that I take of the brothers and sisters all together are sometimes some of the only pictures they have. Wow of themselves right. with their siblings. right, And so that's fun, and we do uh, um, high school, the uh, prom. Yes. We do prom night, so it's it's been pretty satisfying. And then closer to home, uh, there's a, maybe you met her if you haven't, you, you need to, because I think she's an icon in the community, and that's Kathy Sanders. And Kathy 
is a visionary like Craig, mm. except her vision was uh, New Danville. Mm. And I don't know if you've ever heard of New Danville. But I pass it on the there. That's about but it. New yeah. Danville is a community of uh, uh, disadvantaged adults that have mm -hmm. had some sort of uh, uh, brain yes. related uh, illness or injury. Mm. And Kathy's got a son who's out there, but it's her vision to give these people a respectable lifestyle and allow them to make a contribution to community mm -hmm. by working and, and having their own apartments and living in a place right. that is conducive to wow. a, a better lifestyle rather mm -hmm. than being confined in someone's house. Like right. A, and, uh, and so I do a lot of photography for, for, for Kathy, pro bono. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's a it's a great place, and uh, Kathy kind of rubs off on you. You, know, <laughs> you, know, you just have to get it's anywhere close to her, yeah. and she's yeah. like, "Okay, Kathy, what's next?" Okay, <laughs> but um, you know, it, it, it's fun to be around that that sort of yeah. person. I mean, yourself included. I mean, I, it's hard to say no to you. I'd like to say no to you. <laughs> it's hard to say, and, and especially your you know your your actors and. Yeah. You know, to see how much that they give. They really appreciate it. I mean, uh, absolutely, they do. I mean, they're, they're, they're talented. They work their butt off. I mean, I only have to do yeah. I mean, this is no easy task. And they you still have real jobs. That's they, the problem. They all have real jobs. Yeah. You know, so they have to work, and then they come here and give of their time, which they could be doing anything, really, yeah. anything else, you know, to help support the place. And that's mostly what they like. I want to ask you, is there stuff that you haven't done yet that you want to do going forward? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I have a long list. Yeah. Uh, What's at the top of that list? Other than travel, because you do you get to travel yeah, a bit now. Well, there's a lot of places I want to go. Mm -hmm. um, I I really want to be in like three places at once. <laughs> I mean, if, if I, I I wish I could. Yeah. I don't know what I would give for that. Yeah. But I'd love to be living in Maryland. I have really. Good, I'd love to be living on the eastern shore of Maryland. I have, we have dear friends there, mm -hmm. that I wish I was their next door neighbor. I could enjoy being with them very often. Mm -hmm. I wish I lived in Virginia Beach so I could mm -hmm. care for my parents every sure. day. They're both 92, and I wish that I could play golf every day here <laughs> and be about 12 other places on Earth. I mean, I'm, right. it's. It's fairly frustrating being me in that regard, <laughs> and, I, and my wife, if she ever sees this, I'm not even going to tell her how to get to a link to see this. And I drive her absolutely crazy, but fortunately, she's kind of acquiesced to say, "I'll go pretty much wherever right. you want to go." And uh, we just have a lot of places that we want to mm -hmm. see, a lot of things that we want to do, and the, the, the dilemma is: I want to be in Maryland, I want to be in Virginia. Huh. I want to volunteer here. I want to play golf here every day. Yeah. But I don't know how to do it all. All of that. You've got a passion for life, and and that's probably something else uh, to help communicate to other, especially younger folks. There, there are times I I, I see this too. Uh, you know, there there are folks out there that they don't have that passion for life, and well, man, they should. But I don't know how you communicate that. Yeah, you know, that thing because there is so much. There are good things in life to enjoy. I'm not saying life isn't hard uh, for folks. That's people don't always have the different, you know, advantages, disadvantages, the change. But a passion for life. Well, you know, we're here but a short time. Yes. And um, you know, to to make the the most of it, uh, I, I I have two things that I kind of sh share around that. You know, one is that whatever you do today, I mean, whatever happens today, you're sacrificing a day of your life today. Mm -hmm. And you better make it the most mm -hmm. that you can, because, I mean, you've given up a whole day of your life. That's right. And do you know how many people would love to have a day that you're not worrying about your health? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I mean, I can tell you some people right now that or the only thing on their mind is their health. Yeah. And so, anyway, that that's one thing. The other thing is don't, a, a saying that my minister from many years ago shared with me is uh, don't let your 
life evaporate, pour it out on purpose. Wow. And for whatever reason, that stuck with me as an important fact. Mm -hmm. And when I put Clint's song, you know, No Time to Kill, next to that, right. for me, it's all about today. It's all about the moment. It's about what difference can I make today? How can I get the most out of today? How can I enjoy it the most? And that's not saying every day is enjoyable. Right. And, you know, I, I like everybody else. I struggle. I have issues. I, some things I enjoy doing more than others. Sure. But, the, but the reality is we have a finite number of days. And we don't know what that finite number is. <laughs> yeah, and none of them are guaranteed. Right. And I'm, I'm going for the gusto. I mean, and, and you ask me, you know, what do, I, what do I still have to do? You don't have enough time. You don't have enough tape, okay? <laughs> Besides, we'll be talking about, let's go do it. Forget about well, talking about it. And, and, do I, it. and I am a doer. I mean, I've given up television. I mean, I, I don't watch any television live. What, what's the purpose? <laughs> I mean, I, when I, the little television I watch is yeah. all on TiVo. Right. And it's fast forward usually at two or three times the rate. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes a week to three weeks or a month after the event's over. Um, and, you know, I miss a lot because of doing. I mean, I probably ought to be more attuned to some of the things going on in the country, you know, some of the things why? going on economically. <laughs> I mean, why? I mean, um, the country needs more doers, right? Well, they need doers like yourself. Uh, well, this country are, needs a lot, and we won't get into <laughs> We politics, won't get into that. But, <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, I, I think that we can all make a, a difference by taking personal accountability and remembering that I'm responsible for me before somebody else is responsible and I don't like victim right I don't like victim mentality if I had a bad shot it's because I, I had a bad, bad shot. shot right if right. I take a bad picture it isn't the camera right it's not the subject it's not the lighting right it's probably because of me and I think that what we all need to do in the communities we live, whether we're in business, yep. individual, is let's ante up, let's step up to the plate and say, what can I do here for Amen. me? Amen. Rather than let's get a handout, let's let's right. let's go what someplace else. Right. You know, let's 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 do it mm -hmm. ourselves. I mean, I I pumped gas going through college. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah. I didn't ask my parents really for anything, hardly anything. But don't get me on that soapbox, but <laughs> I'm more about personal accountability than I am being a victim. Right. I don't like victim mentality. Awesome. But it's easy to fall into. It's too easy to fall into. Feel sorry for ourselves. Like, yeah. Oh, poor me. Why, if I didn't have this opportunity or whatever, as opposed to... Well, forget, you know, hey, if it is what it is, then let's move on. Let's see what we can do with what we've got. Let's make, a make the best of it. <laughs> you know? I can, look, can I tell you this story? Okay, go, yeah, oh, yeah, this yeah. is This is, uh, and I wish it was my story, but uh, um, my buddy Kevin and I have kind of adopted this for Rhett uh, because we're only just two guys. Sure. Pretty old. Not the smartest on earth, but willing to try to make a difference. But... Uh, um, this was about this old guy walking down the beach yep. and he sees this dance-like figure way off in, yep. the, in the distance. You maybe have heard nope, that. Nope, I haven't heard. Um, and the closer he gets, the more obvious it is that this dance-like figure is this young boy who's bending down, picking something up, flinging it out in the water. Yeah. The old man continues to get closer and closer to this young boy yeah. until he realizes that what, is, what has happened is all of these starfish had evidently washed up on the water from an extremely high tide the night before mm -hmm. and they were stranded up on the beach. And this young man is one at a time picking it up, flinging them back in the water. The old man eventually gets to this young man mm -hmm. and says, Hey, what are you doing here? Look at all these starfish. You're picking them up one at a time. You can't possibly be making a difference. The young boy doesn't respond until he bends down, picks one up, flings it out in the water and says, I made a difference to that one.
I wish it was my story. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that we can all make a difference. May not be a big difference, but if there's enough people bending down, picking up starfish, we can make a difference. So. Well, I think you definitely uh, do that in all the charity work that you've done well, and continue fun. to do. Uh, so I'm gonna, we'll have you back sometime, but I'll ask you this question. If heaven exists, what do you want God to say when you get to the pearly gates? It's a good question. I, I don't <laughs> know that I have a, I have a good answer. Um, kind of the story I tell is that I think I'm probably still going to hell, but I'm hoping that the, that the ride down has been a little <coughs> easier because of the few things I've done lately in life. But, uh, um, you know, I, I don't know. I just, uh, it, it's all about trying to do the right thing and treat people the way you want to be treated. And I hope that I've done that on some level. I try to be, mm -hmm. I don't, I kind of have three rules in life, and I'm hoping that when I get there that I've been compliant. And my rules are is I don't do anything I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. I've already done that for a long time. <laughs> Two is I don't wear anything I don't want to wear. Mm -hmm. And number three is that if somebody makes me cranky, it's adios. <laughs> but that one has an asterisk that says yeah. that I don't expect anyone to treat me any different than I treat them. And so if I'm not a good person and treat people the way I want to be treated, then shame on me. But if I have treated people the way I want to be treated and you don't, right. have a good life. It's just not going to be with, right. with me. And so somewhere in the answer to your question is that I've tried to be a decent person and uh, uh, be respectful to you and, and treated you the way I want to be treated. It's good as the answer. That's as good as it gets. Yeah. Hey, Dave, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure.